Hello everyone, thank you for joining and welcome to today's webinar, What's New in NV 5.5? My name is Oros Kovacs and I will be moderating this webinar. I'm excited to be joined by Zach Norman, Solutions Engineer at Harris, who will be introducing some of the major new features and functionality that will be coming out in the newest version of Envy. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. I've muted the phone lines for all attendees, so if you have any questions at any point during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions chat box, and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end of the presentation. We are also recording this webinar, and uh, we will have it up on our website in the next couple of days. We'll also email you a link to the recording, as well as the slide deck that you're welcome to share with your colleagues. And now I'm going to turn things over to Zach. Hi, Ors. Thanks for the introduction. Um, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, just so everybody has it, um, here's my contact information. Uh, my name is Zach Norman, and I'm a solutions engineer at Harris Geospatial Solutions. Um, I'm actually located in the United States. I'm in Broomfield, Colorado. Um, it's where I'm presenting from, which is the uh, early morning for us here. Uh, if you're located in Europe, it's the uh, afternoon for you guys. Um, as Oris had mentioned, a uh, recording of this will be made available. Um, as you guys have questions uh, throughout the webinar, um, use the GoToWebinar app to ask those. Um, that's what we will be looking at um, once we get to the end of the webinar. Um, I will have my contact information later. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into what we're going to be covering today. So just a quick glance at our agenda. Um, we're going to start by covering new features in MB, um, which is going to cover new analytics tools, uh, ArcGIS integration, um, and then we're also going to finish up with a few additions to IDL 8.7. Uh, the very first thing we're going to be taking a look at um, is some of the new sensor support that has been added to MB. It's really important for MB to you know, keep up with industry, um, especially with such a, a rapidly changing industry such as remote sensing, um, so that we can ingest all the different sources of data um, that you guys, our customers, might be using. Um, so there's been three new sensor additions to this version of MB. Um, the very first one that we're going to be taking a look at is CompSat. CompSat 3A is going to be a sensor that provides approximately half meter panchromatic imagery and multispectral imagery with a resolution just over two meters per pixel. The multispectral bands cover the visible and near infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, in addition to this, CompSat will also collect thermal Im imagery with a resolution of 5.5 meters. Here you can see a sample image along with a preview of what the satellite should look like up in space. In addition to CompSat 3A, MB is also going to support PeruSat 1. PeruSat is another sensor that provides multispectral imagery, but the focus is on monitoring Peru's environment. The sensor boasts two meter multispectral imagery with a panchromatic band at 0.7 meters. Here you can also see a sample image and what the satellite looks like. And the last sensor that has also been added to MB is Worldview 4. Worldview 4 is the latest sensor from Digital Globe, a business partner with Harris Corporation. A fun fact is that the imaging system for Worldview 4 was developed by Harris Corporation and provides excellent resolution for remote sensing applications with a pan sharpened resolution of 0.3 meters. This high resolution imagery allows you to see the surface of the earth in detail like never before. And here's a sample image that you can take a look at. With this new sensor support and today's ease of access for public data sets, there's a growing volume of data to be processed and extract information from. The next few slides are going to demonstrate how we've made it easier than ever to get the actionable information that you need from remotely sensed imagery. In order to make image processing easier, I'm excited to introduce the ideas and concepts behind the MB Modeler, our new analysis tool that we will be introducing today. 
The MD Modeler is a tool that allows you to perform batch processing and create custom workflows without writing a single line of code. So with that, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this new tool. As I just mentioned, you can create custom workflows without needing to write any code in MB with the MB Modeler. I'll leave this slide here for just a second so that you can see the animation of the custom workflow running, um, which uses spectral indices over time with ISO data classification to extract spectrally consistent features such as water. To create custom workflows with the MB Modeler, you simply drag and drop nodes into the Modeler area. Nodes are simple. They are typically either data, MB tasks, or dynamic input, input for generating uh, user interfaces. The entire basis of the MB Modeler relies on the MB task framework, um, which is something that we'll talk about here in just one second. I'll stay here for just a second so that everybody can kind of see. I know there's a little bit of lag sometimes in GoToWebinar. Um, essentially, as this model runs, um, the little green nodes are the ones that have finished. Um, if you see yellow, that's the current node that's being processed. Um, and it visually just shows you how it goes through. Um, another little note here is that this little example model that's being shown is actually processing four rasters at once. Um, you know, previously, if you're an MB user, this is something that's actually quite hard to do. Uh, there's a lot of button clicking, um, and it takes a lot of time to go through that if you're not an IDL program. Um, but the basis of the MB Modeler is MB Task Framework. So let's take just a second to kind of cover what tasks are. MB Tasks are small, reusable pieces of processing that make up almost every workflow in the current MB user interface. They range from simple classification tools to more advanced tasks that need to be chained together to perform material identification or creating custom workflows. The power of MB tasks has traditionally been in the hands of IDL programmers, but you no longer need to know how to program to take advantage of them. Um, you know, there's a lot of different tasks. I think it's about uh, 180 or 200 um, that are actually present in MB. Um, this little word cloud um, shows you a bunch of them. Um, you can check out our website for a complete list. Um, but let's go ahead and take a, a closer look at a few different workflow examples just to see what they look like in MB. First, um, this little example uh, performs unsupervised classification on a temporal stack of um, spectral indices after regridding the data to have the same spatial extent and spatial resolution for 13 different rasters. If you are not a programmer, um, doing this workflow would actually be really, really hard. Um, you'd have to go through and regrid um, 13 different images manually calculate spectral index 13 times, and you'd have to go through, stack it, and then manually run ISO data classification. The amount of time to go through and click those buttons, wait for everything to finish, you know, really is not, you know, it's not a good use of your time. And so here with the MB Modeler, um, you just click and drag a few nodes together, um, and you can process all of your data um, with ease. Let's go ahead and take a look at another quick example. So this next example is, uh, it performs automatic change detection and was created for use with Landsat scenes to detect urban growth over Las Vegas, Nevada. The nice thing about change detection workflows is that you can end up with a tool for different applications by simply changing the input for processing. Here, we look at a spec the spectral index built up land, which highlights urban areas, and that's what was used for the original Las Vegas application. If you change the spectral index to something like the normalized difference vegetation index or the normalized burn ratio, then you could have a completely different tool for different applications. Um, one thing I want to point out here real quick is you'll see this little kind of widget box that says input parameters. Um, one of the really nice things about the ME model is that you can dynamically create user interfaces. So you can have essentially a little program um, where you can have your, you know, it, it boiled down to your basic inputs and outputs that a user can set and reuse anywhere else. Uh, so in addition to making it easy to create reusable and automated workflows, 
Um, there are also some other really cool features for the MV Modeler. Um, the MV Modeler uh, also allows you to generate IDL code directly from a model um, or create new MV tasks with the click of a button. I really like this feature because it allows users who might not be um, you know, great at programming but want to learn, you know, it really gives them an avenue to do so. Um, if you create a simple little MV workflow in the modeler and you generate IDL code, you essentially have your own way to generate um, examples that you can pull from and reuse down the, down the road. For myself as well, I am a programmer. Um, as much as I love programming in IDL, um, the MV modeler makes it really easy to do this without actually needing to program. Um, and I will say that there are some cases where I use the modeler over writing IDL code just because it's faster. Another feature of the modeler is that you can add new extensions to the MV toolbox, um, which will give you a button um, similar to everything else in MV, if that's what you're familiar with. Um, there's a whole lot that we can actually cover for the MV modeler. You know, we could probably have you know a couple hour webinar just talking about the features and going through examples. Uh, but that's all that we were really going to cover here. We're going to switch to um, some other analysis tools in Envy. Um, and we, if you have any questions, we'll answer those later at the end. So in addition to the Envy modeler, um, there have also been some new spectral indices that have been added to Envy that you can take advantage of. Um, like all the spectral indices in Envy, these indices are vetted by our science team before they're added into the product. Um, you know, I think that's a very important note because you can probably find hundreds of band math expressions out there. Um, and we make sure that we include the ones that we feel are important. So here's a list of the actual spectral indices that have been added. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of what a spectral index is, um, they are typically simple math expressions that extract information from imagery using two or more bands. Um, you know, some applications for this um, are listed up here at the top of the slide. Um, you know, most commonly, if you're in agriculture, you might hear normalized difference vegetation index, which is a very popular spectral index. Um, but here's the list. Um, you know, a great place to learn more information about this is going to be our documentation. So in addition to the MV modeler and new spectral indices, um, another thing new to MV is ArcGIS integration. So just a quick note here, um, if you're unfamiliar, we've been business partners with Esri for a very long time. Um, NV 5.5 will take our software integration with the Esri um, stack of technologies into Arc Pro um, and also brings a new Python package called MVPy. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at those new tools. So MV 5.5 will allow you to directly access MV tasks in Arc Pro or Arc Map toolbox. Um, this support um, for the new Python package has also been updated for Arc Map to provide a consistent experience across Esri products. With the new Python package MV Pi, you can run nearly every task that you could from MV using our Python API or adding a new toolbox item to ArcMap or ArcPro and using those in Esri's model builder. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at what the new toolbox items actually look like in ArcPro to give you an idea of what the process is for making a new item. So here you'll have three different images. Um, the left image shows toolbox item creation. You specify the task name and the location for the output, tool, out, output toolbox. Um, the middle image just kind of shows what the default toolbox looks like in Arc Map, or sorry, Arc Pro. And then all the way on the right shows your configuration options. Just to kind of demonstrate a little analytic that's been ran and is being displayed in Arc, Arc Pro, um, here's a quick screenshot. Um, you can also see an assortment of MV toolbox items on the right side of the screen here, um, including our entire suite of crop science tools. Um, so with the Esri integration summarized, um, we're going to now move on to covering the new features in IDL 8.7. 
So in case you're unfamiliar, um, IDL is a programming language which is great for analysis and visualization. Um, here's a pretty cool animation generated with IDL that shows a discrete element method physics simulation. Well, one of the main facets of IDL is complex data visualization, as shown here. Um, IDL's new features help support faster processing, um, just like the MV modeler helps image processing. Um, for IDL, um, there's a whole bunch of new asynchronous um, processing classes that have been added um, to help you easily perform processing in parallel. In addition to this, another major feature that's worth pointing out is that there's support for weather data from the GOES-R sensor in IDL. Uh, more specifically, um, support for the GOES-R projection has been added to existing routines. This allows you to visualize the data from the weather satellite. And to demonstrate this, here's an image of last year's solar eclipse with a color table applied. If you look closely at the image, you'll actually see a little star, um, which is pretty close to where our um, main office is in Broomfield, Colorado. One of the things I really like about the GOES-R sensor is that depending on the image type, uh, it actually generates an image every one, five, or 15 minutes over the Western Hemisphere. With such a fine temporal resolution, let's take a look at an animation of GOES, of GOES data generated with IDL. This an animation shows Hurricane Irma's approach to the coast of Florida and allows you to see the motion of wind over other parts of the United States. Each frame of this animation is an RGB representation of three of the GOES-R spectral bands. My favorite part of this animation is that if you look closely at the image, you can even see the eye of the hurricane as it's moving along. We'll go ahead and stay on this for just a second so that you guys can see it in a little bit more detail. I know it might not be as smooth as it looks on my screen over the webinar, but hopefully you guys kind of get the idea here. Give this just another second. All right. So with this, um, that actually covers all the content that we had planned today.